When the adults are going, there's, everybody's a winner, here's a trophy, the kids can see through the hypocrisy. Even in schools, watch this. In the school systems, they will group kids together, have them read out loud, so that the kid that can't read very well won't be embarrassed. Because he can, it's like when we sing, I don't sing very loud because I'd be embarrassed. But what do they do? That's not encouraging for the kids. But let's do it that way. This mentality has crept into the church uh, also. Preachers say, I don't want to offend, so I don't preach on hell. I don't want somebody to get upset, so I'm not going to preach on the cross. I want people to feel comfortable, so they, uh, I won't mention repentance, so I don't want anybody uncomfortable. Baby, let me tell you something. If the devil can come into your church and, and be comfortable, you've got a problem in your church. Amen. Hey, amen to that. The church has become a social gathering place instead of a hospital for the sick sin. Because we worry about pleasing people and making people comfortable than making disciples for Christ and soldiers for the kingdom of God. As preachers, we have a charge in 2 Timothy 4.2. It says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. The preaching of the cross to them that are lost, to them that are going to perish, is foolishness. But unto us, what you're saying, it's the power of God. The blood of Jesus and the cross. I loved our songs this morning. I'm just sitting there thinking, y'all, I'm going to preach on this today. In the cross, in the cross. There's the glory. The power God gave humanity is in the power of the blood of Jesus. That was shed on the cross on the hill of Calvary. Amen. There's power in the blood of the Lamb and at the cross. There's room for everybody at the foot of that cross to be free from your sins. In order to be able to understand this power of the blood, I'm going to set a foundation for you. Leviticus 17.11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for yourselves. For it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Notice he said life of the flesh, not comfort, but life. I don't know about you, but that message tells me that I'm going to deal with life, and life is not always comfortable. But if I deal with it, I can, I can improve my life. Hebrews 9, 22 says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. That's a... Joyful noise to the Lord. You don't have to leave on my account. The power. What power are we talking about today? The power to remit sin. Remove the guilty stains. To give life everlasting is in the blood. There is power. Power. Wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, they tried to cover their nakedness with fig leaves. Watch this. Genesis 3.21 says, Unto I also to his wife, did the Lord make coats of skins and clothe them? I'm going to throw out a theory that I happen to enjoy. I don't know if it's quite accurate, but it's a, it's a good theory. The animal, to give its skin for clothes to be made, that animal had to die, didn't it? Now this, this is a theory that, that I'm taking. The Bible doesn't say this in so many words, but I'm going to show you something. I believe that animal that day in that, in that garden was a lamb. Why? Because it points... To what Jesus Christ is going to do on the cross at that time. Everything the Father is doing at that time is pointing us to the cross. If you read the Old Testament, a lot of people say, I don't like that Old Testament. I don't understand the begots and the begats. Everything that God is talking about there is pointing us to Jesus. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So blood had to be shed in the garden for sin that Adam and Eve had done. And it had to be innocent blood for the guilty. Adam and Eve. God sacrificed an innocent lamb. The lamb gave its life for Adam and Eve to be covered. Not only did it cover them naturally, but the blood had uh, made atonement for the sin they committed. It covered their sin. Since God cannot look upon sin, the blood covered their sin. So when God looked at them, he saw blood, which made atonement for their soul. It didn't make them comfortable, but it did cover what they had done. Good theory. Well, if we fast forward a few thousand years, we come to a place called Egypt. The children of Israel were in bondage, and God was getting ready to deliver them from the hands of their enemy. He told Moses, tell your people to kill a 
lamb. Every household, take the blood of the lamb, put it on the doorpost of the mountains, across the, the way, tell them to stay under the blood. And when I pass by them, I'll see the blood, and death will pass them by. Are you getting this? But if they come out from under the blood, they're surely going to die. On that night, the death angel did go through that land of Egypt. Everyone that was under the blood lived. But the firstborn of everyone that wasn't under the blood, both human and animal, died because they weren't covered by the blood. There's protection in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Well, the children of Israel were delivered from the hands of the enemy by the blood. While they were in the wilderness, God, now watch this, God tells Moses to build a tabernacle. He says, I can dwell amongst my people. He gave Moses detailed instructions on how to build a temple or a tabernacle. Tabernacle is divided into three sections. First section was the courtyard. Everyone was allowed into the courtyard. The altar of burnt offerings was in the courtyard. The second section, the holy place, it was separated by a veil. Only the priests were allowed into this part. The holy place. The priests had to be covered by the blood. The third section was also separated by a veil. From the second part, it's called the Holy of Holies. It contained the Ark of the Covenant. The cherubim and angels faced each other and bowed down. Here God would dwell and commune with the high priest. Watch this. The only person that was allowed in the Holy of Holies was the high priest. And he'd come in there one day a year and it was on the Day of Atonement. And that's when he would enter into the presence of God. But he had to be covered by the blood of the sacrifice to enter into the presence of God. Everybody seeing how this is dragging us? Amen. Amen. Isaiah 59 2 says, But your inequities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his faith from you, that he will not hear. Because of sin, it takes the blood in order for God to hear us and for us to enter into his presence. I mean, fast forward now about 1,500 years from that time. We come to a place called Jerusalem. We meet a guy unlike any other guy. His name is Jesus. This man, Jesus, Lamb, slain before the foundation of the world. Lamb that takes away the sin of the world. The wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting God, prince of peace. He's innocent, he's never committed a sin. Wasn't conceived in sin. Never born in inequity. Yet he loves us so much he stripped himself of the glory in heaven bore our transgression, became sin, so we may have eternal life. There is love. There is love. Amen. Oh, that's love. He's the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Praise God he did that. Let me tell you about the blood. They beat him all night long. They scourged him, and a lot of people don't know that. That's a fancy word. Scourged. What does it mean? They took whips with metal and uh, or, uh, bones and glass chips that was on the tips of them hit him so many times he, the flesh was ripped off his back. The shedding of the blood. They spit on him. They mocked him. Plucked his beard from his face. Stripped him naked. Do you know his own mother did not recognize him? He was unrecognizable. That's how much he loves us. Then they placed him on the cross. Yet he never said a mumbling word. Praise God. The shame and humiliation, he willingly suffered. The agony and stress, the torture and the pain, he did because he loves you and me. Amen. They stretched him wide. They nailed him to a cross. They hung him high. After hanging him for several hours at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which was the time of the sacrifice in the temple. You get that? Amen. The same appointed time, the priest was going to, to do his sacrifice. Jesus is dying on the cross. Jesus looked to the heaven and he says, It is finished. Now watch this. When the priest in the, the uh, tabernacle would sacrifice on the altar, he would take a knife, he would hold it under the, the uh, sacrifice, under the neck, take the knife, and cut the throat, let the blood pour out. The priest would say, it is finished. And Jesus said, it is finished. He is the perfect sacrifice. And it came that the price of sin had been paid in the shedding of the blood. The blood of the innocent had been uh, given for the price of the guilty. His blood covered me. That's love. Amen. If it had not been the blood on the cross, where would I be? Where would you be? Think about that. 